Chapter 9 deals with the process of DNA replication. In this first section, we will discuss the semi-conservative nature of DNA replication. Before the nature of DNA replication was known, there were three putative hypotheses that could describe the nature of the DNA replication process. In the first hypothesis, the daughter strand is created in a completely new manner while retaining the structure of the parent strand. So the red strands show the new DNA that's been newly constructed. This is called the conservative replication model. The second model is a semi-conservative replication model, where the resulting products each contain one parent strand of DNA and one new strand of DNA. The third model for DNA replication is known as the dispersive model. This is where the parent DNA would be interspersed in between regions of new DNA synthesis. So it turns out that DNA is replicated using this semi-conservative fashion. But to be able to understand this, a pretty cool experiment was done to show that this is how it happens. So this experiment is an experiment that uses N15 labeling. In the first part of the experiment, the entire parental DNA is labeled with heavy nitrogen or 15N nitrogen. The culture is then shifted and grown in 14N nitrogen or regular nitrogen. If the DNA replication is conservative, you would expect to have two different bands of DNA. One that represents the parental strand, which would contain all of the heavy DNA or the 15N nitrogen containing DNA, and one band that would contain all of the lighter 14N nitrogen. However, if it was semi-conservative, or dispersive, you would expect to see a single band in the first generation or first round of replication for both of these types of models. This would indicate that you would have equal amount of the parent and the newly synthesized N14 containing DNA. So to tell these two models apart, you have to do a second round of synthesis. So if you have a semi-conservative model that's shown here, where one entire strand is from the parental DNA and one entire strand is newly made DNA, when you separate these out to use them as template, you would still end up with one strand that contained one of the parental strands of DNA that would be labeled with the 15N, and then you would have one strand here of newly synthesized DNA as this was used for the template, and then you would have the newly formed strand here as the template and form the new daughter DNA with the 14N nitrogen as well. So what you would end up with is two bands in the semi-conservative model, one that was a mixture of the parental and the daughter DNA, and then one band that had only the new daughter DNA that would form. If it was the dispersive model where they were intermixed, you would still only expect to see a single band that held this mixture of the 15N and 14N nitrogen. So what researchers found when they actually did this experiment, they ended up with the semi-conservative profile, a single band after the first round of DNA replication, and this double band after the second round.